how to apply adjustments, color adjustments to images in Photoshop, PC or Mac. There's a couple of approaches. You can go to image menu and down to adjustments and you've got a number of options. Maybe go for hue and saturation. Now this is a destructive effect. As soon as you've applied it, that's it. The only way to remove it is to undo. You can change the color, the saturation, lightness, etc. And just click OK. You've also got some presets, which are always very useful. So red boost and click OK. But that's it. To get rid of it, you have to undo. Also, you've got the option with this, which is always nice. Edit and also fade hue and saturation. So go there and they all will have the same thing. All those adjustments will still have the same fade option. So you can change opacity, change the blend mode and run through them like darken, multiply, etc. And then click OK. Again, you need to undo if you want to get rid of it. So image, adjustments and maybe vibrance. It's another option. Change the vibrance, push the saturation up and click OK. Got exactly the same as before. You can go to edit and you can fade it. But if you want to remove it, you have to undo. Now you can apply, of course, again. Unfortunately, go to image, adjustments, vibrance, and you apply it two or three times. Up to you, what you want to create with your color effect. This is a destructive effect. Even better, non-destructive effects, but this is fine. If you want to just apply the color effect, that's all you want, perfectly reasonable. You can apply brush strokes, etc., to this image, no problem. So let's undo those, get rid of those. Key thing about this, with that destructive effect, it can be only applied a layer at a time. So if you've got two layers selected, it will not work. But destructive effects are great, but non-destructive ones means you can just remove them. It's a layer which you can remove at a later point. And you can do that via a layer, as well as other places. So layer, and just go down here to new adjustment layer. And this time I'm gonna go with brightness and color. The selection is much the same. In fact, the same. So brightness and contrast, contrast, click okay. Thing is, you can then go here to properties, the properties panel. And you can move this, increase the brightness or decrease the brightness. You can also change the contrast. You also got here, use legacy if you wanna use that. You've also got a mask. A mask is created with this, and you can also see clip in here as well. The reason that appears is in the adjustments panel. So you want to just go over here to adjustments, and you can find that in the window menu. Go to window, adjustments. Right side menu, there's an option here, add mask by default, clip to layer, which is very useful. What happens, it will just be applied to that single selected layer. So you've got that there, that color effect will be just applied to that, nothing else. So I can just undo, and I'm gonna show you. Just go over here, right click, add mask by default, get rid of it, select that, clip to layer. Now, if you go over here and apply a layer, so layer and new adjustment layer, just go down there, and you can go down to say like vibrance. Let's go select vibrance this time, click OK, now you can modify, of course, the blending mode, etc., as well via that. Sadly, not here. That would be really nice if you could, but you can't. But you've got the options here, change the property. So you can change this at any time later. So this is a great feature. But you'll notice then, you'll notice no mask is created. Now you can create a mask, of course. Go to layer. You've got option here, layer mask, reveal all. Just simply select that and then you'll get it. But it's not done by default. So undo and also no clipping. So it's applied on top of that layer and it's applied to all the layers below. And you can modify again at any point. So as soon as you click there, you can modify it. So let's just go again, layer, and you can add three, four, 10. So new adjustment layer, and this time I'm gonna go for exposure. Click okay, and you can see you've got another one. All the adjustments will appear here. And you can modify this, you can increase the exposure, offset, etc. Again, you've got presets, so you can go backwards and forwards with those. And again, you can see no mask is generated, no clipping. So it's just applied above 
apply to all the layers. But you can select this one. So you just go down here. And as soon as you select it, you'll notice here in the properties, you will see the different settings, window and properties. You can go to the right side, you've got options here, number of options there, save, exposure, etc. Well, what you can also do is you can delete them. That's the great thing about layers. You can delete them, change the settings. So you simply just go down here and you can delete. Yes, exposure and delete. Now, because I like the clipping as well as there, mask, so add mask by default. I'm just gonna put that on and also clip to layer. So now when I create it, gain layer and new adjustment layer. And let's just go for black and white this time. Click OK. And you can see, move those backwards and forwards. Got lots of options here. Got different ones here, red filter and so on. But again, you've now got the clip. You've also got the mask, which you can modify. Add, select it and apply a gradient to it. So different parts of it will have color. Some parts will be in black and white. That's the mask. Very useful, very useful feature. And again, any point, simply click here and delete and it will ask you delete layer mask because it's obviously selected, so yes. And also now delete and the layer's gone again. So you can apply it using that. So that's a layer and down here, new adjustment layer. Now, what you can also do is you can do the same here. So you've got this layer selected. You can go down here and you can click and you've got exactly the same here. So hue and saturation, let's just go with that one. So hue and saturation does exactly the same thing. It's exactly the mask, etc. And again, you've got all the settings here, so you can go through these. You've got presets, say sepia. So quickly, you can turn it into a sepia image and you can modify it, change the settings, etc. Change the saturation and much, much more. And again, it's just a layer. You can delete it and delete that. Delete the mask, yes, all gone. But also, you can apply it via here. So adjustments, you can go to window, and you've got adjustments. And you can see the adjustment, add an adjustment. And you've got this one, black and white, color balance, you just run over them. Unfortunately, it doesn't show the names, only the ways, but you just have to know that that's brightness. You might not know, if you do, it's fine. And you can go maybe color lookup, color channel mixer, threshold, so you select that one. As soon as you click it, this will appear, and you can modify the settings. So you can just increase that, decrease it, as well as, again, you'll get a layer generated. Exactly the same as before, you can then delete it. Also, you can go here, right side menu, and they just give a lot of options to create these adjustments. So levels, so just select levels, exactly the same as before, this will pop up, and of course you can give it a name, it goes by default levels one, but you can change the color, so you maybe like say, oh, have it as red, and that will appear in the layer. It will just indicate it's red, doesn't change any of the settings, etc. But you've also got blend mode, so you can say multiply, maybe change your opacity. A bit hard because, of course, you can't see the effect at this point, so it's a bit of sort of hit and miss. But you could, if you know the sort of general thing you want, you know that multiply works, opacity works, then you can obviously quickly set it via this. You've got this option as well, and click OK. And straight away, you've got this. And there's the red, so you can see, if you go through your layers panel, you'll be able to see like red, blue, green, etc. You can set them to different colors. Makes it very easy to spot certain adjustments you want. And of course, exact same as before, you've got all the options here, and you can change the mask. You can also change the settings. So again, you go here, and you can just tweak it, maybe make that lighter, darker, and so on. So you can just tweak it to your heart's content. Again, you've got presets, increase contrast, lighten, and so on. Though I must be very subtle sometimes. And again, you can delete, etc. So you've got a lot of options for adjustments to modify the colors. Once you're happy, of course, if you've done your various things, you've changed everything, applied everything, you've got your adjustments here, you might want to just flatten it. You don't have to keep this, but any of these if you don't flatten it, if you go to File and Save As, all these layers, these adjustments are all saved with the image. And of course, 
If you've got a very complex image with lots of layers, lots of adjustments, you will have a very complex set of things and you can group them and much, much more. Now there's a final one to add even more adjustments to it. There's smart objects. So let's just go now, layer and flatten image. So the flatten image, and I'm just gonna deselect that so it just becomes a normal layer again. And I can resize it, move it around, maybe duplicate it. And this one, I'm gonna turn into a smart object. So layer, and you go to smart objects and convert to smart object. That means you can apply smart filters to it. You've got over here, filter, and you've got all these smart, and they can be modified at any stage, which makes it very flexible, but you can't apply brush strokes. Not directly, you have to edit it. But what you can do, you can also go over here. Now, confusingly, it's not layer, and new adjustment layer, though you can still apply that, just applied just as a layer on top of it. But what you can do is go to image, adjustments, and you've got all these. And this time it's a non-destructive effect. So you can move it, apply it. So let's say, I don't know, it's one that I haven't used, but posterize, yeah, something like that, posterize. So you can just increase or decrease, go maybe there. Click OK. And you can see the effect. Now, it's not called smart adjustments. It's actually listed under smart filters. It becomes a smart filter. I was thinking it was smart adjustments, but that's, and also you've got, again, you've got here, blending. So you can blend. So you can click there, double click. And sometimes it's click, sometimes it's double click. And you can go, go through this linear burn, soft light, difference, and just apply and change the settings there. You can smart filters, you can deselect it, so you can remove it straight away very quickly. Bring it back again. Posterize, you can remove it, you don't have to keep it. But the thing is, the great about it is simply double click and it brings up this panel and you can then modify it. So you can turn around and say, oh, it's just levels five or six, click OK. With that selected, what you can do, gain image, adjustments, maybe black and white. So black and white, now you can go for black and white there and I can just increase the yellows, greens, etc. Click OK. And you'll see then you've got black and white and posterize. So all these settings you can see and you can remove them or you can remove posterize and you've got the black and white there. So you can just run through them very quickly and it's still live. So this image can be modified. You can always double click on this, edit the image, apply different effects to it, and these are still live, so you can just come, bring them back or add additional ones simply via image and adjustments. So that's smart objects. You may or may not want to use the smart objects. They are useful, and I must admit, one of the things that I love to use more than probably normal layers. But that's layers, properties, and adjustments. The three panels that are very, very useful when it comes with adjustments. That's pointed out, there's a lot of ways of adding adjustments in Photoshop 223, as well as, of course, earlier versions of Photoshop, PC or Mac. Finally, you can also apply adjustments with channels. However, it's the destructive effect you can apply. So let's just go to channels. You can find that in the window menu. And with an image, just a basic image, not a smart object or anything, what you can do, just go to, say, red channel. So red channel, just select that, or green channel, up to you or cyan if you're using CMYK, etc. What you can then do is you can go over here, image menu, adjustments, and you'll notice that not all of the adjustments are available. Obviously hue and saturation, black and white are just not available, but you have a few. So you can go here and you go for say levels. So levels, and you can turn around and say, oh, let's just make it lighter or bright, darker there, maybe just squeeze that really close, the input levels really make it a lot darker and click OK. And now you'll notice if I go back to RGB, that's using the red channel. But you can also say go to the green channel. So this one green channel, let's just go for image and adjustments and I can go invert. So I'm just inverting it. So now you can get quite a garish image just simply by going that. Go to RGB, you can see now you've got a very intense pink and green image. Maybe not the most brilliant of adjustments, but you can see you can create some interesting ones. So blue. So of course blue, you can of course go and apply a filter. So maybe go for filter, blur and Gaussian blur, just blur it really 
pretty heavily there and now go back to RGB and you can see the end result. But of course you can go to blue if you want, image, adjustments, and maybe go for curves. Now curves, you've got some options, but you'll notice what you've got in the channel, you've just got blue, because that's the channel you're in. So it's, it's just offering, it's not offering you red, green, because you're not in those. But then you can just simply make that darker or that lot lighter, up to you. And of course there's other options as well, so click OK. And you can see the end result there. Obviously there's not much blue in the image, it's obviously a blue sky, <laughs> it's short supply in the UK at the moment. So you can see the result there, you've got that sort of very, you can see the blurring effect there. And that's using channels with adjustments. Hope you found this of interest, please put some comments, any questions you've got about these, always great to hear from you. Thank you much.